Perry who've joined here on site and welcome to those of you who've joined online. I pray that you'll be richly blessed from this evening's service. We'll bow our heads for a short prayer. <clears throat> Dear kind and gracious Father, Lord, thank you for allowing us this time during the midweek to pause to gain a bit of a refreshing before thy holy Sabbath and just to give us the strength we need to finish the remaining part of this week. I ask that you might be with the service, be with Elder Otero who will be presenting this evening, and I ask that you might bless all those that will be hearing and watching. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll start with hymn number 183. <coughs> hymn number 183. Hymn number 183. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me for he left bright worlds above and died on Calvary. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give, he has died, that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Oh, the depths of love divine, earth or heaven, can never know how that sings. As dark as mine can be made as white as snow. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give, he has died, that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Nothing good for him I've done, how could he? Such love bestow, Lord, I own. My heart is one. Help me now, my love, to show. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give, he has died. That I might live, I will sing his love to me. <clears throat> Amen. Let us now turn our hymnals to number 539. Hymn number 539. Number 539. I will early seek the Savior, I will learn of him each day. I will follow in his footsteps, I will walk the narrow way. For he loves me as he loves me, Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. I will hasten where he bids me. I am not too young to go. In the pathway where he leadeth, not too young his will to know. For he loves me as he loves me, Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me, this is why I love him so. He is standing at the doorway of escape from every sin. I will knock for he has promised, he will hear and let me in. For he loves me as he loves me, 
Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. Our final hymn will be number 191. <clears throat> number 191. Number 191. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, let us find the promised rest. Take away our bent to sinning, Alpha and Omega be, and of faith as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy grace receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing, serve thee as thy host above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation, perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. I'll now turn it over to Elder Jose Otero. Good evening, everyone. Let us at this time pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for letting us uh, at this moment have clarity of mind so we can uh, decide for ourselves um, what shall we do with our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, you have uh, made repeated uh, efforts and requests to us to give our lives to you. And today, let that day be. For uh, we ask these blessings in Christ, I pray. Amen. I forgot my mic. I mean, I forgot my microphone. I should not do that. Today we're going to uh, be looking at Matthew um, 5, uh, chapter, chapter 5, verse 7, and we continue our study of the Sermon on the Mount. Thank you. And we're up to the part where we're going to talk about being merciful. The scripture goes on to say that um, those that are merciful will obtain mercy. So you give, but you will receive. Isn't that nice, right? A lot of people say, I don't want to give and give and get nothing in return. Well, the gospel is not like that. The gospel is um, you give and you be blessed many times. Um, Mercy, very inter interesting word. Let me make sure my mic is on. Very interesting. Um, what does merciful mean? Uh, of course, there are different things that come to my mind. Uh, forgiveness is one, right? Um, when somebody has done you wrong and they ask for mercy, 
and you say, okay, I gave you some mercy. Or relieving someone's pain, right? You're staying up with them all night. You're being merciful to them. You're taking care of them um, physically. Also, of course, uh, merciful has a religious connotation, if you will, um, in which God gives mercy to his creatures. Uh, merciful can also be compassionate or kind, forbearing uh, towards somebody who's an offender or perhaps be seen as an enemy. Um, or someone perhaps who's generous or has a lot of generosity. And someone, of course, who has mercy on the poor. Merciful is mercy on the poor, the homeless, and the widows. And one of the qualities that I love about uh, being a Christian is that I'm obligated to be merciful, forgiving. And we have a system in place where a person who's been convicted of a crime can ask for mercy. And um, sometimes he gets it and, um, in ways that uh, we see fit, and sometimes it's up to the judge and the jury to see what's fit. Um, also, when we talk about being merciful, we're also talking about animals, right? Animals and the environment. We can be uh, also uh, merciful to those things as well. And as far as I'm concerned, I receive a lot of mercy. I don't know about you, but I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. Um, part of being merciful is um, forgiving and also being patient with uh, people who makes mistakes, people who cause accidents. You know, you ever heard of that person? That person is accident prone. You know, things happen, but to, to this particular person, it happens more often than others. And sometimes they um, need more uh, mercy. I know children, we have some here today, that sometimes they do things, they make mistakes for whatever reason, and they um, ask for mercy, right? Have you ever asked for mercy? A little bit? You a little bit. You a lot, right, Nathan? A lot of mercy, right? Well, I, you know, just like everybody else, I, I ask for mercy. And, you know, children do um, um, certain things that they should not do. But in their mind, they have a di they're, they're in a different world. And I remember when I was small, um, we, I was living at a time where we got a spanking. And so when you heard that saying, wait until I get home, um, you know, that, that that was you going to be in trouble. And, and all day you're worried, you know, you know, you're scared. And I remember one time I got mercy and I did something bad. And um, I remember my father bringing him on, taking me, putting me on my knee and um, telling me, why do you do that? Why do you shave your sister's eyebrows, you, you know? <laughs> That's not nice, you know. Look at your sister now; she has no eyebrows, and you know. And why you do that? That's, that does, 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 doesn't make sense, you know. And sometimes we do that as adults, and so um, we we get into the the habit of thinking that we can get away from God and do things right all the time. But that's not that's not right, though. We we make mistakes. Adults make mistakes just like children, and so adults need mercy. Yeah, I remember another time this little girl, I bumped into this little girl in the playground, and I got in trouble for it. And um, we, we went up to the principal's office, and um, she, the principal asked the girl, do you want Jose to go back into the playground? Can he go back? And she said, no, and not today and forever. And I said, what? No mercy? And sometimes we get involved with emotions, right? Emotions play a part in this, and, and we don't give people mercy. But being merciful is helping anybody who's around us, helping them. Um, mercy means giving a second chance. We all need a second chance, right? The Bible tells us to stop being bitter and angry. Um, merciful is, is doing good to those that sometimes even hurt you. Uh, without expecting anything back. Being merciful is being kind to those who offend you. Um, sometimes it's not all about the, the argument, you know, you want to win the argument and you forget about the mercy. You're trying to win the person, not the argument. 
right? You're trying to win the war, not the battle. Merciful means building bridges, not tearing them down. Sometimes you have to be merciful to those who are unpopular, perhaps. Building friendships with those who are not accepted in society. Remember when the Pharisees told Jesus, why do you eat with those uh, sinners and tax collectors? And so what did Jesus say? I'm showing you mercy, and you're giving me animal sacrifices. Being merciful means valuing relationships. Sometimes we work in strict places, right? Where policies and procedures come over the individual. And sometimes the individual needs mercy, but the policies and procedures um, don't have that in place because the corporate is the one that needs mercy, not the individual. One thing I like about mercy is that it's an active and practical action, not just a thought or a feeling. Let us go into our study of be, uh, about being merciful. Let us go to Luke chapter 10. I'm going kind of quick here because um, of the time, but of course, um, this requires study. But try to stay with me here. Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. Here we have the parable of the good Samaritan. And I kind of like this parable. I like all the parables. In this parable, we have a scholar of the law. And what does he ask Jesus? How can I inherit eternal life, right? Isn't that what we're after? And then what did the scholar say? He provided his own answer. What did he say? To love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And what is that? That's mercy. What, what, when, when he answered, Christ followed up with a parable. All right? And so the parable says, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked at him, and passed by on the other side. But a person who you would never expect, a Samaritan. This is the person who was seen as an enemy. And Christ continues to say, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him, or he had mercy. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest, more when I come again, I will repay thee. And so, Jesus asked the question, Which now are these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And the Lord said, He that showeth mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. So Jesus here is telling a story about a person who's been robbed, he's been beaten, he's been stripped and left for dead on the side of a road. So that's a kind of a bad situation, right? Very bad. And so what kind of people pass by? You have a priest and a Levite. And when they saw him, they went on the opposite side. They needed to go somewhere, right? Maybe they were late for a sermon or, or a prayer meeting. And so I, I can't help this person. I, I have an appointment. Then a Samaritan happened upon the man. 
But he had a different response. He was moved with mercy. He took care of the man. You know, sometimes um, somebody is on the side of the road and you might call the ambulance, you might call the police, but you know what, if he needs mouth to mouth, <laughs> you know, that's as far as I go. But this man, he wounded, right? He wounded without gloves, without anything. And he took him and put him on his animal, right? Which is his car. And he took him to an inn and cared for him. So you see how the mercy continues. It's not just like um, he was merciful and then, you know, he's on his way. He went through a, a process. Then the next day he gave some money to the innkeeper. So it continues. The mercy is just being poured out by this Samaritan, a so-called enemy of Israel. And he promised that he was going to return to pay anything extra that was spent on the man, whoever was caring for him. So now, who treated the man with mercy? Was it the religious people or someone who was seen as an enemy? God wants us to do likewise. And I, and I think, and I say to myself, okay, this, this is straightforward. You have a parable. It's, it's, all the answers are there. But I say, wait a minute. It's a powerful parable. Remember what did the lawyer ask? Who is my neighbor? He wants to know who is my neighbor. After all, if I want eternal life, Christ is telling me, wait a minute, I got to be merciful on my neighbor. Don't you need to know who your neighbor is? Because you want to you wanna get the goods, right? So you, wanna, you don't want to waste your time. And so I'm thinking to myself, is this the right answer? I'm sorry, is, is this the right question? I don't think so. I think Christ was telling, trying to tell the man that I'm talking about the scholar. That was not the right question. That you were asking the wrong questions. Are we to um, look for who qualifies for our mercy? Are we to evaluate the qualifications of that person for us to give mercy to them? Does Christ look at us and evaluate if we're worthy or not? Or are we deserving? Of course not. But when the rain comes down, it comes down on all of us. When the sun shines, it shines on all of us. So, is eternal life being merciful to someone dependent on the successful search or to identify our neighbor? I think that eternal life here in this parable is talking about the conversion of the heart because we have religious people and then we have someone who seems to be an enemy but the one that seems to be an enemy is the one that has a converted heart he was moved with compassion he was moved with mercy and then the others ignore the man we should love our neighbor In this parable, being merciful teaches me to see, to see a victim. And this makes me look beyond myself. Someone who needs my mercy, I cannot be thinking about myself. I have to, be think, I have to think of someone else. Being merciful teaches me to be thoughtful, like the Samaritan. The Samaritan teaches me that being merciful draws you closer to people. And so when you're closer to people, do you, do you get to know them? Sure. And so when they suffer, you suffer. So then being merciful, you're, you're, 
You're being compassion and mercy, but you're suffering with them at the same time. The next lesson I see is that it's, it's a movement that needs to take place physically. It's just not a feeling. The next lesson I see is that the Good Samaritan was building a network because you have the Good Samaritan, you have the person who was the victim, and then you have the innkeeper. And the innkeeper is one of the people that you hear least about in this parable. But I believe that he's an integral part of the parable, even though he's not um, focused on. Because, well, after all, didn't he give mercy also? And trusting the person and coming back and paying him whatever else he spent. So there's a network that is, that is being made when you're merciful. Being merciful teaches me that sometimes I had to spend some money, some time, and the priorities in my life might have to be um, rearranged. And so being merciful brings a lot of adjustments, right? You have to let self be second. And then the fifth lesson I learned is that merciful brings happiness. When you're merciful, there are no, um, there are no cons, only pros. Let us go to another um, example, which is quite opposite of the Good Samaritan. Let us go to Matthew 18. In Matthew 18, um, we have another, another uh, situation here, another parable, if you will, where you have an unmerciful servant. So you had the Good Samaritan, which uh, displayed what Christ is looking for. He displayed mercy and everything else that is good that comes with it. Here, you have the total opposite. You have here a situation where Peter, remember Peter asks, uh, how many times should I forgive my brethren? And um, Christ says, um, until seven, I say unto thee, in verse 22, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. And then he con continues on to say, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. So a king has servants. And one, I'm sorry, and when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owe him 10,000 talents. Now, 10,000 talents is the highest um, number at that time in the Greek language. So um, in today's language, it will be what? A trillion, a gazillion, right? Something like that. Whatever is the biggest now, that's 10,000 talents was the biggest amount back then in language. One talent weighs about 50 to 83 pounds of gold. One talent, okay? And this person owes 10,000 talents, okay? So this is an amount that will be impossible for anybody to repay. And it goes on to say, for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children, and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, right, mercy, and loosed them and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owe him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pray, pay me that thou owest. So we have one that owed 10,000 talents, right? And then one that owed 100 pence. So one pence is one day's work. 
So this is about 100 days of work that he owed. Now, that's quite an amount. But is it compared to 10,000 talents? No. So here we have an offense of 10,000 talents and one that is 100 pence. 29, and his fellow servants fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Ooh, have you ever had that person that tells everything? Everything that goes on wrong, and that person tells? Isn't that, isn't that something else? You have something that has done, been done so wrong that this person goes and tells the Lord. How is the Lord going to respond? Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So what can we learn from the unmerciful servant? First of all, you see the difference between the Good Samaritans and the unmerciful servant. In the Good Samaritan, you have happiness at the end. And the unmerciful servant at the end, what do you have? Very, very distressful. Lessons from the unmerciful servants. Forgiveness is not natural to man. It is not. Being merciful is not easy for humanity because we have fallen natures. And so at the core, in our hearts, we have selfishness. We have a desire for revenge. And we want personal retribution. But forgiveness is the whole basis for our opportunity to receive heaven. Being merciful is Christ-like. Number two, mercy reflects the highest human quality. Because, again, it reflects the character of God. So a person who is merciful is imitating or has this divine character. Number three, Christians need to be merciful. Why? Well, because sooner or later what's going to happen? You're going to need mercy. And so if you're not merciful, then what are you going to return? Get in return. And sometimes people who are not merciful receive mercy, and hearts are one. But for the most part, if you've been an oppressor um, and refuse to change, you're not going to receive mercy. Mercy is a give and take issue of life. As long as we live, we're going to receive mercy, and hopefully we're going to, or we, I should say we're going to need mercy. But we have to be merciful. Being merciful brings unity. It brings unity in the home. It brings unity in the community, in the church. Because I believe that being merciful is the key to love and the key to building all meaningful relationships. Sin, what it does, it builds a wall. And mercy is that hammer that breaks down the barrier. And so as long as we live, we have to be merciful if we want to break down the barriers between people. And this is including God's people. The unfaithful servant or the unmerciful servant is a reality in which exists in the church today. This is how Christians are treating each other. It's very unflattering. But the fact of the matter is that today we live in a world which is not merciful, including God's church. And so what kind of 
what, what kind of behavior do we have when someone is not merciful? We have division and, and strife. But what happened in verse 31? How did the, how did the king respond? In verse 33, it says that we should and we are obligated to return to forgive the sins that others commit to us. At the end, the king was moved with anger and the man was sent to the tormentors. Be merciful. It means to end bitterness, to lay aside anger, and refuse to dwell on the offenses that have been forgiven. Being merciful is letting go of any thought of retaliation or revenge. Being merciful is not remembering the sin no more. Being merciful does not come easy, particularly when it deals with kinds of sins that destroy lives and relationships. In Luke chapter 18, verse 38, Let me get there. Luke 18, 38. Let us go a little further up for contact. 37. And, they t and this is the man um, who was blind. It says, And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, and he should hold his peace. But he cried so much more, son of, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was, he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath healed, saved thee. And immediately he received his sight, and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. So here's someone who's blind, that cannot see. And he knows that Christ is near. And he's asking for mercy. And everybody's like, oh, be quiet. You know, how many of us are trying to be Christians while everybody else is trying to say, oh, why are you going to a prayer meeting? Oh, why are you go to church all day on Sabbath? Oh, why do you spend so much time? They're trying to tell you to, shh, be quiet. But what are we saying? Lord, be merciful to me. Every time we study the Word of God, we're asking for mercy, for understanding, for a sight to be given to us. In verse 23, 21, It says there, let's go to 20. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. So here's Christ giving mercy and what he should have gotten back. He should have gotten back mercy. But what does he get in return? He doesn't get any mercy. But what does Christ does next? In verse 34 of the chapter 23, what does it say? And thus said Jesus, Father, forgive them. Give them mercy, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Isn't this a lesson for us? That how, how much mercy can be given to a person is is beyond me, you know. We we have um, we have mercy, but doesn't it come to a point where 
Sometimes we have our limits and we say, okay, that's enough mercy. You know, let them, let them, let them hang. And humanity has shown that they had, I believe that many do have mercy. But I believe also that when it's people are not kept in check, they can get out of control. I've seen, um, I've seen in history book pictures of lynchings where people receive no mercy just because of the color of their skin. People have done so many things, so many uh, um, um, sins because of the lack of mercy. To review, it says here, because God has shown us mercy and abundant in his love, for us is so great. While we were spiritually dead in our disobedience, he brought us to life with Christ. So if we have been given mercy, isn't it right for us to continue to give mercy? What is life all about? In Micah 6, 8, it says to walk humbly, to love, and to give mercy. And number three, we're going to need mercy at one time or another. So let us get used to giving mercy. And number four, because showing mercy brings, of course, happiness, shouldn't we be merciful? The word blessed also means happy. So the more we demonstrate and the more we learn to be merciful, the happier society is going to be. And until we learn to be merciful, there is no way for us to be Christians. And most of blessing here, in the part of being merciful, it says the merciful are partakers of the divine nature, and in them the compassion love of God finds expression. All whose heart are in sympathy with the heart of infinite love will seek to reclaim and not to condemn. Christ dwelling in the soul is a spring that never runs dry, where he abides, there will be an overflowing of benevolence. Blessed are those that are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God bless you, and let us continue our study of Mount of Blessing, and we'll see you next Wednesday at 7.30. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we continue uh, the study of your word, let us continue to uh, strive to have that Christian character, to reflect that character, dear Lord, is the only way we can receive and obtain eternal life in heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that sin is not going to arise a second time. So let us continue to study that word and let us be saint here on earth first before we go to heaven, dear Lord, for this is our number one priority while we're on this earth. In Christ I pray, amen. God bless you. and. Um, We'll see you next week at this time. Our pastor, Lord Grubb. <laughs> God bless you. And uh, before you go, um, I know you're you talking about, no, you're good. You're good. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you're good. All right. Before they go online. Um, just wanted to uh, reiterate that. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So we believe the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, received mercy, obtained mercy. And so the question is always in my mind, when I think about mercy, um, and I think with, with me here, as I was thinking about it, as Elder Jose presented, that the mercy, you said sometimes the mercy run out, but the mercy does run out with God also. And the situation was beautiful in the text that you read. It says that the king offered mercy, then the person didn't offer mercy to the person that he should have offered mercy to. And so the king took, back, took the mercy back, so to speak. But it, it testified to the text. The text says, as you read, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's for them shall obtain mercy. You have to be merciful. And you think about the disciples, you know, Christ prayed for the, the Pharisees that they should be offered mercy, but they continue in their rebellion as the mercy was taken away from them. So the mercy is often given. Um, 
I want to read this text here um, before we go into our testimony time. As um, just beautiful in Second Samuel chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-five through twenty-eight, it says, "Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my my cleanness in his uh, in his sight. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright." With the pure, thou shalt show thyself pure, and with the forward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. And the afflicted people, thou wilt save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayst bring them down. So Christ doesn't deviate from the words that he inspired his apostles and prophets and patriarchs to write. He simply says, those that are merciful will be given mercy. Those that show no mercy will be shown the same way. And so if we want mercy, we must be willing to forgive. As, as they say, we must be willing to be kind. Or we must be willing to be merciful to others. And we shall obtain mercy. And this is what God is calling from, from us. And that's the blessing. Now, if there's any prayer requests and also if there's any um, testimonies, anything you, you have to share about the Lord leading and blessing since the last time we met, or if just in general. So any testimony or prayer request at this time, um, we're going to keep continue praying um, for um, Brain, you know, who is not doing well still, and I need to get in touch with her. And so keep her in prayer on, in, that her recovery continues. Um, also, I need to pray for Emily. I was communicating to her this week, and she's still in pain from her elbow, and any other prayer requests? Uh, continue praying for our country, that God be merciful as we see how many um, problems are happening, not only in the political scene, but also in the social scene with the drugs and with the various different violence that we see across the nation, and also the outbreak of various different natural disasters so we keep praying for that i want to pray also for those that are online our online viewers always a blessing to have you and to welcome you here um with us as you worship with us or partake of the worship that we do here may god bless you wherever you are at any other prayer requests please oh this is your brother's birthday okay great so thanksgiving for um, your brother's birthday. I'll just leave it at that. One of your brothers. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Any other prayer requests? Oh, my parents are going to be traveling next week. Actually. Oh, down the road? They're going to be in the air? Next week. Travel mercies for your parents. Any other prayer requests? Right, is <laughs> for us here for continued um, blessing. Um, and one more time, though a small group, if there's any testimonies, any excitement in your life, um, just, just the only thing I can say is I'm just here, just. Um, I will actually share this since um, there was a small group here, but I shared that, you know, this week um, I'm started starting once a month preaching over by um, New York United in Harlem, in New York, New York. So this is a new endeavor, so kind of expanding what we're doing beyond here to in the city and kind of um, we're partnering up with the pastor, Pastor Whiteman over there in New York, so this is something new that we started in this month. I've been there before, as those of you online know, or probably have missed me sometimes, but I've been there before preaching, and so something to pray for, pray for the blessing upon that church and for myself, and Lord may guide me as how I minister with them over there, and um, I will be sharing some of the resources of some of the members over here also in the upcoming future. I have plans for you all. So <laughs> keep that in mind. So this, this is what we've been doing. So this is starting this Sabbath 
So Aldo Zay will be preaching this Sabbath here, and I'll be in New York um, United um, doing the services over there this this weekend. Um, so just pray for that. That's something new, and there's some of the things that I'm working on that I'll continue to share with the church. So with that, we'll um, have our prayer, um, and um, then we'll close. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we are so thankful for the blessings of this day that you have given to us. We're thankful, dear Lord, for the way you continue to lead us and guide us into that truth. We're thankful for those who are here present and also those who are online. I pray that you may bless each and every one who is um, partaking of um, the service here, wherever they are in this world and in this country. I pray that you may continue to bless and guide us, dear Lord, as we try to connect uh, through various different means um, to those that are seeking for truth and seeking and longing for guidance. May you bless us that we might be able to part, um, partake of that word and to share it with those with all truth and honesty. And given, dear Lord, the word in, good, in season. We're thankful, dear Lord, for your blessing on us that you, might, you have guided us and protected us over the years. And as we see so many different things going on in the society, we're thankful for the instructions that you give us in how to not only take care of our bodies, but how to live in society and avoid many of the harms. And as we see, dear Lord, there's so much political turmoil in this country and so much natural disasters and social problems that are exacerbated by drugs and alcohol. And we thank you for the words that you have given to us, the way that you guide us. And we pray, dear Lord, that you may bless our hands as we try to minister to those um, inside the house of faith and those outside, that we might be a blessing, dear Lord. And we pray for mercy upon the land as we know that as these disasters and these situations increase, if often because men have turned their backs against thee and have gone to the dark side. May you bless um, us, dear Lord, and bless the nation, we pray. Um, our, our Father, we ask again for healing upon Sister Raina. She's struggling with Lyme disease. I pray that you may continue to bless her. Um, she's um, ministered to us um, in our needs, and I pray, dear Lord, that we might be able to continue to minister to her and continue to ask for thy mercies upon her. Pray for Sister Emily also that you may be with her in her strain on her elbow that you may guide her as to how best to um, work on that naturally and even if it's necessary medically to relieve the pain that she's going through. Um, I pray dear Lord for Martha's um, prayer request upon, upon her brother that you may bless him and continue to give him more years and more wisdom as he gets older. Um, bless him as he gets older. Also, we pray a blessing for our parents um, who are going to be traveling, that you may give them safe traveling mercies and continue to guide them along, dear Lord, as Mr. Martyr continue to bless and minister to them. We pray, dear Lord, um, for myself, a prayer, a prayer request for me, that you may continue to bless me and bless our church group here as we um, connect more so with New York United and Pastor Whiteman, that you may bless that church, bless the ministry that I'll be um, doing with them over there in New York. And you bless, dear Lord, hearts and minds who are, again, longing, dear Lord, for guidance, looking for instruction in your word and looking to understand um, life, understand salvation. Pray that you may bless, dear Lord, those that we'll be trying to reach out to, those that we'll be trying to connect with in New York. And may you strengthen, dear Lord, our ministry, strengthen the work of our hands, not only there but also here, that we might be a light in this community more and more. Thank you again, O oh Lord, for your ways. Thank you again for your guidance. And I pray, dear Lord, a blessing upon all of us here, even as we prepare to leave this place. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the birds of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want to be able to thank you I want to be able to thank you for um, being with me here this evening and looking forward to joining me um, this Saturday evening as Sabbath as we do our worship service. And again, we'll be here for Sabbath school this Sabbath and also for midday service. And um, if anything else will be posted online, what next will happen. So God bless again and hope you have a productive week for the rest of the week. Um, see you on Sabbath. Mm-hmm.